I'm Christina Molina, a visual artist living and working in New Orleans, Louisiana, and originally from Miami, Florida. These are two magical cities that have largely influenced my art practice, and I'd love to share a little bit more about that with you by discussing my artwork, The Matriarchs, which was partly exhibited at Crystal Bridges for State of the Art 2020. There is no ocean where I live. So you gave me a shell so that I could hear your secrets from afar. You remind me you were born on the day after an eclipse. That birds of paradise make a cracking sound before their milk hits the tile. You taught me that passing cars sound like waves breaking on the shore. I know that one day, the ice of the world will submerge the tropics. I worry that all I remember now will be washed out later. You tell me not to worry. You say, you are an absolute balance. The answers will bounce off the sea and into the sky. You are a pillar who rests on the shoulders of her mother, who rests on the shoulders of her mother. In The Matriarchs, I collaborate with all the women in my family to produce a series of still life photographs, portraits, and moving imagery that emphasize physical gestures of connectivity, hierarchy, balance, and tension, all allusions to the dynamics that exist between women and family units. Set in the subtropics, the work conflates feminine identity amidst a disappearing South Floridian territory. I was prompted to make The Matriarchs after reading an article about my hometown in The New Yorker called The Siege of Miami, written by Elizabeth Colbert. In the article, Colbert clearly delineates how Miami is among one of the most vulnerable coastal cities threatened by sea level rise. The very same week, my mother called to tell me that my grandmother, her mother, was diagnosed with dementia. Suddenly and all at once, I felt a parallel between the erosion of my motherland and the slow effacement of my grandmother's memory and, in turn, our family history. Ultimately, The Matriarchs is about contemplating and anticipating loss while creating an index of our family's intergenerational story and a gestural expression of our relationship to the landscape of South Florida and one another. These environmental portraits of my grandmother, Olga Romero, in her home served as the initial inspiration for the Matriarch series. The nurturing ritual of watering and tending to her garden was one I witnessed during my upbringing. Now, I see these expressions of care serve as a model example for the reciprocity and mutual respect that can occur between an individual in the natural world they inhabit. A combination of water and high contrast sunlight transform this seemingly mundane act into one that symbolically evokes an earthly Eden of domestic idealism and iconic transcendence. After photographing Olga as an individual, I decided I needed to show the connection between family members 
and the bonds that have formed our group identity. One such photograph is Mother of Pearl. The title derives its name from the main subjects in the photograph, the two sitters, my mother and me, and the oysters. In this image, my mother and I stoically gaze at the camera during a decadent meal. Our pinkies are attached by one long fingernail. As a result, one of us cannot feed ourselves without influencing the other's movements. This gesture can be seen as a reference to an umbilical cord or a tie that has not and will not be cut. In this portrait, I decided that we should be dressed alike as it may not be initially apparent to the viewer that we are family. It then became evident that to bring forth ideas of unity and lineage, garments needed to be designed for each of my family members to wear during our group photographic and video sessions. The main repeat pattern in the matriarchs was originated from a handmade collage converted into a graphic of palmettos, conchs, and lunar shapes, and printed on yards of cotton twill fabric. This uniform of sorts makes it obvious that these women are cut from the same cloth, so to speak. In the group portraits, the subjects were placed in positions that physically and metaphorically emphasize hierarchy, tension, and symmetry. In an image like Backbend Portrait, for example, one figure is physically carrying the weight of another. While one person seems strained, the other person seems to be in ecstatic repose. This depiction is one that can emphasize emotional balance or misbalance within familial relationships. The singular portraits of the matriarchs were made in the corresponding woman's backyard. Following traditional notions of portraiture, each image serves to visually describe some part of her individual identity. In an exhibition setting, this imagery was printed at a smaller scale to encourage close physical proximity between viewer and image. The small scale is similar to handheld prayer cards or tarot cards used for aiding in divine intervention. I imagine that the images could be left over for future generations in our family to use as a connection between themselves and us, their ancestors. As such, references to mythical protagonists such as saints, deities, and other well-known icons are interjected throughout. La vejez tiene cara de perro. La ley del hielo está en efecto. ¿Hasta dónde llegamos? ¿Cómo pasa el tiempo? Cuando se acabe todo, no te ahogues en un vaso lleno. Arriba, para abajo, para el centro y para adentro. Todos tenemos soluciones. 
menos los muertos. The still life imagery of the matriarchs referenced the Vanitas Dutch paintings in the 16th and 1700s. Memento Mori, as these images were often called, roughly translates to, remember, you will die. Through the rendering of macabre symbols, these paintings pointed to one's eventual mortality or decay. The intention behind these Vanitas works were to encourage viewers to respect the fragile and fleeting nature of life. In the still lives of the matriarchs, flora, fauna, feminine archetypes, and fragments of the body are arranged in a tableau setting. Each image is purposefully constructed to reflect an in-between state of representation. Time-sensitive materials like fire, ice, oxidizing fruit, and smoke are incorporated to provoke ambiguous readings about life and death. Such themes include enlightenment versus destruction and preservation versus erosion. The video work, Ice of the World, is divided into a three-part bilingual prose. While every part is narrated by me, each section embodies a different attitude. In part one, I describe a scenario between my mother and myself. Part two takes on the tone of my grandmother, Olga. And part three vocalizes the attitude of my mother, Olga Maria. In all three sections, our voices convey our anxieties and approaches to coping with loss. ¿Por qué no de tanto para morir en la orilla?
porque no la puedo ver ni en pintura. La lluvia vino a echarle agua al mar. Se cayó la luna y los mangos se pusieron a roncar. Paso a paso, día a día, pasan las horas sin hablar. ¿Qué me diría la madre de antes? Esperar no está en nada. Sigue, camina, quítate las espinas, que donde hay mujeres no hay fantasmas. It's been a pleasure to share this work with you today. Thank you for listening.